what is panic disorder? And what are common symptoms? What are common triggers? Panic disorder is a severe anxiety disorder. And this occurs when someone is having unexpected, repeated periods of intense fear or discomfort. Sometimes it lasts minutes, but at times it can last hours in the day. And the common symptoms during these, what we call episodes, are the intense fear or extreme anxiousness, racing heart rate, racing heartbeat, or pounding out of the chest feeling, shortness of breath, or feeling like they're suffocating, trembling, dizziness, lightheadedness. There's like this fear of I'm about to die or I'm gonna lose complete control. And another symptom is a fear that it's going to happen again. And some common triggers, um, sometimes actually there's no warning. And we call that panic attacks that are happening out of the blue. It's a phrase that we use sometimes that is just, I don't know what caused that. And of course, these can be triggered when they are reminded about the first panic attack, um, whether it's a conscious or unconscious reminder. And this can lead to further panic attacks. For example, if the first one was at a dark parking lot and it wasn't really because of the dark parking lot, but next time they're in a different dark parking lot, it could maybe trigger one. Can trauma or a certain experience cause this disorder? Yes. Many times a counselor or therapist or psychiatrist will seek to discover what event began and jump-started these panic attacks. Panic attacks lead to a panic disorder. They're not the same thing. A disorder means constant repetitive panic attacks. Anybody could have one panic attack in their life. Um, and traumatic events definitely is a common cause. How often do children suffer from this disorder? Hmm. It's not certain what the prevalence is within children, but something we do know is there are greater than 3 million Americans, that's the statistics that we know here, that will experience a panic disorder during their lifetime. And many times it does begin during adolescence. So I can imagine that this would be a similar prevalence rate or percentage in any other population in the world too. What are typical treatments? Definitely one of our first recommendation is what we call psychotherapy. We try not to go straight to medications because in therapy such as CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, they try to understand where it's coming from and to learn new ways to control the anxiety or panic attacks. Sometimes we do need medications because there's a general level of anxiousness and the severity of panic attacks can be greater if there's already a general, general anxiety. And sometimes we use meds because panic attacks causes someone to feel very paralyzed. Can you imagine if someone's driving and then they're having a panic attack, they can't drive safely. So at times we use medications and encourage people to get therapy and counseling to understand where they're coming from. And early treatment can definitely uh, prevent complications because untreated panic attacks or panic disorder can lead to another type of uh, condition like depressive disorder. And sometimes it would cause agoraphobia, which means fear of being trapped uh, and therefore they won't go outside. Sometimes if it's untreated, they will turn to using substances like drugs or alcohol. So early treatment is very important too. So if a person is taking medication, is that around the clock or right when they start to feel panic attacks? That's a great question. We have two types of treatment medically. 
One is to treat the generalized anxiety in order to reduce the chance of these kind of panic attacks to happen at any time. And those are called maintenance anti-anxiety medications. That is around the clock. And then something that I call rescue medication, um, something used as needed only. Some might feel, oh, I can feel it's coming on. I know I'm gonna have one. Um, or they're so afraid that there's gonna be a reminder um, and then it'll trigger a panic attack anyway. Sometimes they'll have a medication that lasts a few hours to make sure that the heart is calm because the panic attacks are very related to physical symptoms. The heart starts beating fast and you have difficulty breathing. And then sometimes those physical symptoms causes the panic attack to get worse quicker. So some of these medicines help calm those physical symptoms down. What can parents or teachers do to help children with this problem or when they see children who might have symptoms? Yes, I have several thoughts for you. Um, one is to recognize that panic disorder is a serious illness and it should be addressed because it interferes with relationships and school performance and attendance. Sometimes they're so severe that children will refuse to go to school, refuse to leave their home. And it would also interfere with normal development if they're not going to go to school or interact with other people. And untreated panic disorder uh, can lead to avoidance and have fear of leaving home and lead to depression. And then that could also lead to suicidal ideations. We have known people to have untreated panic disorder. It is so um, severe in its feeling because it feels like a heart attack but it's happening all the time and people are telling you it's not a heart attack, then it can lead to suicidal ideations and that would be very dangerous. And if a medical general doctor finds no medical reason, then meeting a mental health professional or trying to figure out if this is a psychological issue or psychiatric issue is important. Um, and for example, it feels like a heart attack. So many people go to the emergency room thinking that they're having a heart attack and they're, something's wrong with their cardiac function. They'll do all of the tests and it comes out the heart is just fine. So people leave the emergency room sort of confused. Why did that happen? Uh, so that the next step is seeking counseling and seeking the reason behind all of those attacks. Another um, thing to do to help children is to validate the nature of the discomfort to not dismiss like oh you're fine your heart is fine yes their cardiac and heart function is fine but they're not fine right so we need to validate that but at the same time reassure that, that their perceived harm or threat is not happening they're not really in danger um, and it's not probable uh, even if the ha event happened or the traumatic event happened causing all of the panic attacks, sometimes their thought is this is going to happen again right now and that's why they're having that panic attack. And of course, we need to present the gospel good news message, right? Where this um, anxiety in general the fear, where, where do those all come from? And how Jesus is ultimately the answer for that. And I'm thinking when we understand who Jesus is and how he is our protector and he is our provider, then the concept of trust, faith and trust can be deepened because severe anxiety, worry, panic, is ultimately the most excessive form expressed of disbelief and unbelief, just complete lack of peace. So explaining the all powerful God and who Christ is, even though he's not a physical being, um, but he is real. Uh, that kind of concept to give to children is important. For example, they might trust in their parents, but 
they'll have a panic attack even in front of their parents, right? So maybe we can also share, well, even though I am real, you're still not having a panic attack. Jesus is real and let's go to him and understand what my fear thought is. Sometimes it is because the monster's gonna come get me again. Perhaps that's what triggered it in the first place. They had that thought. But to realize, well, even if the monster does come, who is with you? Jesus is with you right now. And you can use his name to make those fears go away. Can you tell us again what it might look like having a panic attack? And if we actually witness someone having it, what are things that we can do to help them? Some people might not be able to express, I'm having a panic attack, right? Because they don't know. So it might start looking like they're breathing really fast, they're clutching their chest, and they're looking very fearful, right? I, I'm, I'm gonna try to impersonate one. Like, and then they start breathing very quickly, Nothing, it seems like they're losing their sense of their surroundings. Maybe they're gripping something as if like they're about to fall and it might be very blurry for them. So I think if you are witnessing that and you wanna help the individual, first of all, don't shout, okay? <laughs> and don't say, calm down. That would not be a good idea because that would maybe make the anxiety even worse call out their name, um, Mary, I'm here, you're okay, let's breathe deeply together and then do the deep breathing with them or, or tell them you're breathing very fast. I think you need to slow it down. Um, how about follow after me? Deep breath in and out, you know, and just do that. Now there's a lot of debate, I think in my mind of whether to touch the person or not touch the person because you don't know if that's a trigger, right? And so you might not want to touch the person initially and, um, and maybe ask the person, that's okay. You can say, can I hold your hand? Um, do you want me to hug you? Um, do you want some space? Uh, and, and, and I'm going to tell everyone to leave. That's okay. You can do all of those different steps to give them some space to calm down. And what if they're not coming down and you start suspecting it can be a medical issue? What should we do? Very good. I was assuming that maybe it's already known that it's a panic attack. So the answer to this question is, of course, it could be a cardiac issue or they're having an asthma attack, which means it's a lung problem and suddenly they can't get air in their airways. That's called an asthma attack. Those can also mimic a panic attack or they can trigger a panic attack as well. When the panic attack is happening, you mentioned that so many people don't know that they're having it. So if they have triggers, are they always aware of these things or is that cause in their conscious? Many times they are not aware what the triggers are. That's why it's so confusing and that's why they may think it's a heart attack or asthma attack. But after like a medical doctor says, there's nothing wrong with your heart and lungs and a mental health professional says, I think you have panic disorder, then one thing to remember is the next time you're having one is to tell yourself or ask someone to tell me, this is a panic attack, not your heart. You are not going to die from it. So that's a good thing to remember. And after that, like in between, not during the panic attack, in between is to deeply discuss with a counselor or someone, what might be the underlying reasons for anxiety underlying fears or reminders of past traumas there's a lot to discover of what is causing 